it's a straight down cut, you see the sword is aligned with the direction he's going, so that would be a nice, very clean cut. It's, it's, it's like he's a dolphin. He's swimming with the sword. The water's gonna get in there. Not only is it going to ruin and rust your blade, the inside of the sheath is also wood. It's still going to damage it. The guy's body's made of pudding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my name is Brendan Hewer. I'm a stunt and motion capture performer and fight coordinator, and I've been doing martial arts for almost 30 years. So my name is Lawrence Monk. I've been doing martial arts for the past 13 years, specializing in Japanese hand-to-hand -hand as well as sword. So today we're really excited to be reviewing Sekiro Part 2. Uh, I myself never fully beat the game. I also have not beaten the game, so this is going to be fun for both of us. Oh god. <laughs> So the world is very pretty. It's very stylized, obviously. You're not gonna see a lot of landscape like this in the real world, obviously. And you're definitely not gonna see giant fish coming up and destroying bridges, right? Everything in this game, obviously the, the monsters and creatures and stuff are huge, but like everything is just on such a grand scale. Right. It like doesn't really exist in the world. Make you feel so small. But it does do a good job of setting kind of the atmosphere for the game, you know what I mean? Yeah, and the aesthetic, the Japanese aesthetic is, yeah. is so spot on without being like, Cheesy. As much as it has the Japanese aesthetic, you still feel like you're in a fantasy world, and obviously it's heightened by these fantastic monsters, you know? The landscape by itself, <laughs> something about it just feels so fantasy, like this. <laughs> the nice thing about it, though, is even though, you know, like we were reviewing Ghost of Tsushima earlier, and that's like a beautiful environment as well, but this one is like, it's beautiful, but it's also very uh, overwhelming and scary, dark. It's darker. I'd say it's it's darker, it's less vibrant. Mm -hmm. I mean, we say that seeing this, but even so, it's less light is the best way to put it, I guess. It's such a weird walk animation, though. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't move his arms at all. He doesn't. <laughs> I really like the Tory gates. Usually when you see the Tory gates, people think of, like the big orange ones with the black base, you know? So right. to see it look a little bit more natural. It's wood, but it looks almost like it's one piece, you know what I mean? Like it was formed this way, which is really yeah. cool. He wears much less armor in this game. And to be fair with this game, the damage is very punishing in this, so the idea is you're supposed to not get hit, right? Oh, no, mm -hmm. As much as humanly possible. Well, he's much more of a, of a ninja in this game. I mean, he's personal bodyguard to the lord that you're protecting, so. Plus he has a really dope-ass, like, grappling hook. What do you like so much about grappling hooks? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> with the way grappling hooks are used in video games because you're almost using it like Spider-Man, right? You're anchoring mm -hmm. in the air and you're swinging using that momentum. And for me, I guess it's because I'm a bigger guy, but it feels like my shoulders would dislocate every time I try something like that. Realistically, even if you got it to anchor at a point with like such a great throw, you have no way of like un Unhooking. undoing it to then yeah. take it with you. You yeah. have to either just leave it where it is or you have to climb up to it and then untie it and then yeah. keep going. I love the cherry blossoms here with these trees, you know? Well, I'm always just a big fan of cherry blossoms in general because obviously the cherry blossom, especially the pink cherry blossom, is so synonymous with Japanese aesthetic and culture, you know? <laughs> it's, it's, it's like he's a dolphin! It's not very often you see koi fish as the enemy, or like the harmful thing. Right. But that one definitely looks threatening. Fun fact, I can't swim as it is, so this just scares the hell out of me. Another thing about this is swimming with the sword, you know? With the sword, it's not an airtight seal. So what happens is water's gonna get in there, not only is it going to ruin and rust your blade, the inside of the sheath is also wood. Even though it's lacquered wood, it's still going to damage it. The guy's body's made of pudding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just in terms of the sword work there, you see it's not a long protracted fight. It's literally one and done. Mm -hmm. The whole idea with Kenjutsu is you wanna be as efficient as you can with your sword. You're not trying to do these prolonged battles because at the end of the day, when you think of it from a general sense, you're swinging around a very weighty piece of metal and your body's not meant to do that for long periods of time without getting fatigued. So the idea is you want to finish those fights as quick as possible. It's not meant to be like a 10-beat sword fight against five people at once, you know what I mean? Yeah, especially in a Sekiro, you know, like the character you're playing is a ninja, not a samurai. So right. he's not like on a battlefield facing a whole bunch of people. He's trying to get to his objective as efficiently as possible and just like taking people out. So, especially with Sekiro, obviously it's a fantastical game, right? It's meant to be fantasy. Even from a general standpoint, he's floating in the air while he's casting out the yeah. grappling hook. Bodies don't work like that. Gravity doesn't work like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it, and it looks like when he grapples out and like yanks, you can see the rope go slacks. It's not the grappling hook mechanism like reeling him in. He's yanking, yanking himself. So he's, he's breaking his shoulder every single time. <laughs> ah! 
I mean, I guess robotic arm, I forget. Do you remember where it gets cut off? I think it's... Okay, so there's no way the shoulder's supported by the mechanical structure either. I'm, yeah. I'm just trying to play devil's advocate here. I really love the use of the statues, kind of as a background, you know what I mean? It's not there for religious purposes by any means. It's more there for background and to kind of establish more of that East Asian aesthetic, which is really cool because I think it's actually pretty well done when you take into context that this is a fantasy game, right? It's not meant to be historically accurate. Mm -hmm. It looks cool. It's a really weird lift into the cut, but... Yeah, and it looks like the momentum of both of his strikes is executed towards the front. Like, that's right. kind of like the apex of the swing. Anybody behind him is gonna be fairly safe. One thing they really do with the animations in this game is they really kind of accentuate the stretch he does with his body, right. which looks great, but... Um, functionally, it's not Functionally, it, it doesn't do... Anything. a lot to help you. <laughs> a lot of these cuts where they're generating force, they tend to use a lot of muscle. And the idea with Kenjutsu and the katana is the katana is supposed to be sharp. And so you're not trying to muscle, you're trying to get a nice clean technique and let the sword do the work for you. Okay, so that is a little bit more of a traditional cut in terms of the way it's being executed. It's a straight down cut. You see the sword is aligned with the direction he's going. So that would be a nice, very clean cut. It looks very kendo. Yes, it does. Kendo is when you see like the bamboo swords that's hollow in the middle and you see the full armor on and they spar. The reason why we say it looks very Kendo is if you watch that second strike, he bounces up at afterwards. If you're striking someone and you're cutting them, you wouldn't bounce, you'd try to cut through. You wouldn't want to bounce off the target because that means you're not, A, you're not confident in your cut, but B, you're not cutting all the way through either. You're bouncing off of them. Even if you were to deliver a bouncing cut like that, that wouldn't be the one that you stop on. What's good about this one is how he's kind of driving in with each one in uh, Chinese martial arts, and there's a style called baji where we use a lot of elbow strikes. And the idea is that you're putting your entire body weight, it's almost like a full body tackle focused on your elbow. I feel like in this game, anything that's sort of enhanced it's very ninja. obviously by magic can be considered ninja yeah. because, you know, we don't really have a full-on documentation of the extent of right. ninja stuff, I guess. That's definitely ninja. I mean, that's some bull I'm just gonna say that right now. I mean, now. it's it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I guess this would be more of a samurai skill, and the idea is he's going from an EI stance and doing right. several slashes and returning it before we even see what happens, and then right. we see just the after effect. With a grain of salt, I'm not an expert in ninjutsu. Just saying that now. Uh, the biggest difference between ninjutsu and the whole idea of Bushido with samurai is the idea with samurai is everything is very head-on, very honorable, at least that's a lot of what the history shows with it. Whereas with Ninja, it's more to blend with your surroundings. It's not going to always be as fantastical as wearing the black bodysuit and hiding in the dark at night. With Samurai, you have the full armor on, you have the katana in plain view. Mm -hmm. Everything you fight is supposed to be head on, things yeah. like that, you know? I mean, it's a Samurai is a, is a nobility class and part of their code is, yes. you know, having that honor to like face your opponent head on, you know, right. without any hesitation or doubt. And I believe like the the origin of that whole bodysuit is kabuki theater. The uh, the stagehands would wear these suits so that you can't really see them. You know, but the I, audience is, is sort of conditioned to ignore them. When they would do plays and they would need ninja characters, they would just put them in those same suits. The audience is like, oh, we're supposed to ignore them. And then later on, they reveal themselves to be someone important. And you're like, oh wait. So already we know at a distance the spear is going to have the advantage, so the idea is always to try to get in. The idea about trying to get in on the attack isn't just to dodge the attack, obviously, but you're trying to close the effective distance of the weapons. If you get in close enough, yeah, they can still use the stick part of the spear to kind of hit you bluntly, but now you've mitigated a lot of the risk of the bladed side, unless they literally slide and choke up more to use it at a shorter distance. That counter that he's doing when the stab is coming in, he steps aside and tries to force the shaft of the spear down towards the ground. That's a pretty great move. And then generally when you stomp on the shaft, that would Break disarm it. your opponent, but it seems like the grip strength is just super high in this game. And that is just such a big spear, it's so thick. Yeah. <laughs> the way she's blocking his sword, which is much longer and thicker, just one-handed by holding it there is uh, not very realistic. She's a ghost. She is a ghost. Say in video games, what they like to do a lot with double sword is they like to do both cutting from the same side as if that does double the damage. But really what that does is you're having like half the strength on each hand, right. making it even easier to defend. A lot of the techniques he's using here wouldn't really work on plate armor because it's just a large chunk of metal. The, the whole mechanic of this battle is you're supposed to try to like get him off balance and knock him off the edge. Okay, in that case, doing what he's doing with parrying and stuff like that makes more sense. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> 
So overall, with Sekiro, for me at least, great as it looks aesthetically, as cool as it looks, a lot of the technique being used isn't what you would consider like traditional Kenjutsu or, or Samurai, you know what I mean? No, it's not realistic at all. I mean, as a fantasy game, it does a really cool job of like, you know, upholding its world. And mm -hmm. I do like that the ninja character, you know, is shown to be adapting stuff from different styles and using all of it. But uh, yeah, it's definitely not realistic right. at all. Thank you guys for joining us. If you want more videos like this, be sure to check out the Gameology Facebook page and YouTube channel. See you later. So today we're really excited to be doing, uh, sorry. <laughs> so it's barrier between us, as well as wearing masks between, t uh, bet sorry, one more time. Mm, cool. That's it, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs>